Hey there everybody, welcome back to episode 6 of the Tutorial Sect. I'm Icon and today we will have more adventuring to do. And beyond that we will start transcribing our knowledge into these men, into these uh, pallions. I'm going to talk about how to work with manuals in general and yeah, there's a couple of things which we will do here in between. So first off, I want to continue where we left off in the last episode. We have here a couple of adventures which still need our attention. So first off, I want to uh, go over to the manifesting mandate thing because it really ni uh, lines in nicely. So as you see here, the mandate is occurring at Mount Lucian, but these people, they don't like us. They are not granting us access. So to get access to other sects territory, first you need to pay them a visit and give them the gift of one spirit stone. Then they will hate you for that. What is this? You call this a present? But as a matter of fact, now, you could also just adventure to this place and do your thing. But as you see here, this will take 2.39 days. I'm possibly not going to do that. This is way too long for my uh, for my taste. So we're going to wait that out. Here we go. Let's rather go to the rebuild agency event because that's way more important. The thing about the manifesting mandate event here is, well, it's time based. Yeah, whatever. Let's just do that and follow other uh, topics in between. I'm just too tempted to uh, give a to get a roll on a advanced law because these are really really powerful and think of advanced law acquisition as uh, as of something like acquiring a big and tasty skill book which teaches you new skills in any uh, other game because that's basically what it is it's a little bit more than that too but for, for the sake of simplicity, we, we can look at it like that. And here you get a, uh, here we see that a beak ha beast has awakened at Nanping village. This happens from time to time. The meaning of these events is quite simple. The, in this world, sometimes uh, beasts can transform into an enlightened state and then they will eventually turn into humans if you pull it off correctly. It's a little bit odd. It's uh, all quite uh, quite an, a foreign type of fantasy for me too. But at the end of the day, that's just how it works. When you get that message about awakened beasts, it's basically the game telling you that there is a new opportunity to to transform a monster into a uh, person. Look at that, Yao guy. Super, super, super fast. His battle rating ain't that high, but bull people have an insane movement speed. Move speed is 10.6 meters per second. My people walk 4.7 meters per second, so you get the idea. And actually, guys, we're not done yet. There's also a tiger attacking Yan Pengyun. We're just casually walking back home. That's your problem, buddy people sometimes okay we we got that all done and now let's uh let's wait until we have the adventure done so for now our people here are living the good life the only thing that we really need to do is we need more food so that's going to be where I'm going to um, go deeper into. Alien is now quite uh, quite busy. Oh, we have a new passerby wishing to join us. That's awesome. I was low on hands anyway. So this person here has a really low chi uh, sense, but she has a very high social rating. People with a very high social rating are pretty desirable for your sect because they make a very good material for the establishment of agencies. We're going to talk about the agency topic in a, in a couple of minutes. 
So the manual pavilions will ultimately hold our hold the knowledge of our sect. I'm going to fast forward the game now until the uh, mandate thingy is there because there's not much to do right now. All right, we arrived at the mandate. So here we see that we have discovered a place that has the teachings of the myriad artifact law. So to take it by force, we would need a cultivator from the primordial spirit level. We're, we're very far away from that. And a certain portion of luck. We're going to try if we can accept the teachings, but sadly she did not gain anything from the inspection there and left. If the person has the correct stats for this law, if the match is at least 100%, they will automatically gain that advanced law for your sect. Sadly, Helian has not had the correct stats, so I didn't acquire the law. But since these are really hard to come by, and the, for example, the Myriad Artifacts law is the best law in game to create powerful artifacts with, you're really, really uh, taking, you, you should really take any opportunity to acquire these, especially that early on. Because if I, I could have been lucky and it could have been a law where, which had awesome stats or where her, st her stats were an awesome fit. That's how I must say it. We didn't, so we can't send any outer, any other outer, outer disciples. So sadly, we are not able to achieve that. Here we get another event, here we, could find something if we could muster somebody who is able to survive a heat of 500 degrees Celsius. Now, we are in the middle of the uh, standard gameplay loop. The game uh, tosses towards your sect constantly events which give you options to acquire different goods, laws, or medicines, and it's up to you to follow these tracks. Since we only have one inner disciple that's how these actual cultivators are also called it's really difficult for us to to get anywhere we need more of these people that's what you see so we found some gray stone in the box okay alien is now back home and her next job will be to go towards the agency rebuild event so you see your inner disciples are quite busy people she's on the road constantly to shorten the traveling times, there's a lot of tricks which we can do, which we could have also applied as of yet, but I don't want to uh, go into talisman crafting right now, because this game has so friggin' many layers that it's really difficult to put them into a correct order, so... Here we go. Let's hunt more bulls. And also, my new guy here could use a weapon. So let's see. My new person shall get a timber axe. And we're going to craft ourselves another bow. Because I feel a lot safer if everybody has a bow. We are not at the point where I have already really powerful cultivators to protect my sect. So the mortal people must do that themselves. This is by far the period in the game where you lose the most people, or can lose the most people, that is. Because I gotta say, mortals, they are really, really squishy. <laughs> but, well, that's just how mortality works, you know, being very squishy. Okay, so you see here, somebody else claimed that mandate. The That's uh, the dispersal of that event. Once that uh, that message comes, the event is gone. So now we get to uh, unlock a new location, the Mount South location. So this event unlocks the ability for us to build agencies. So you see this new flag here. Now you can assign somebody to over there and you need 100 pieces of wood. We can now assign other people. Oh, no, we can't yet. Okay, we need to. Ah, of course. So we can't assign somebody to Mount Sal. Since uh, the new person here had a decent social rating, I'm going to send her there. The most important stats are social and tutor uh, tutorial. Battle. <laughs> 
to uh, social and battle are really good to have on the person which you send towards the agency. We're also giving her uh, uh, some spirit stones on the road. This is really good because somebody with spirit stones in his possession has a high chance of acquiring more followers, but more about that later. We're going to talk about why followers are good once the agency is established. So what happens now is that Yan Pengyun just uh, goes over, or no, not Peng, no, Pengyun is still with us. Um, wait a sec, or... I forgot her name, but we're building now the Mount South uh, thingy. So the power menu that you that I just opened gives you an overview of all the places where you can build agencies. Mount South is just the first of many to come. So all these locations can be used for agencies. And a puppy has appeared nearby. This is a very, very happy moment. The puppy here, you should just uh, do yourself a favor and adopt him. The puppy is in fact a very powerful spirit animal and he's a companion for your sect. He is extremely powerful, you see here, this thing has 20,000 G for comparison. Hylian Hua has 1,000 G. You, you must think of G as for one aspect, it's mana to fuel your skills. But it's also the force you can put against somebody if you're taking damage. So, in some way, Chi works in this game as hit points and mana in one resource. Simplified. So, with that being said, my first cultivator right now has 1000 Chi. And this thing has 20,000 Chi to begin with. So, you need to train him. The, you see, he wonders what Outer Disciple Yan Pengyun tastes like. So you see here, he wants to do something and you can now either discourage or encourage him. So we're going to discourage him from the attacks on Outer Disciples. But as a matter of fact, it's not that horrible as it sounds because what he would do would be a rather harmless attack and giving you the opportunity to train your healers with, but just saying. So whenever he is trying to do something new, he get that hesitant uh, message here. He wants to train his spell-based abilities. Good dog, go forth. And yeah, that, that's how it works. So <laughs> you get to train his development. And when you check out the uh, screen here, you see that's his growth bar. And once he's uh, th above 30%, he's mature, and he's now growing stronger and stronger from this place on, from this point on. There's um, also a spirit fox which you can get as a pet into your sect, but he the puppy always shows up first. The good thing about the puppy is he's going to be a very very powerful protector for your sect from this time on. He's able to tackle down most enemies that will attack your sect on his own from here on. And that, therefore it's pretty cool to have him here. So the rest of the episode now we will spend more time at home I think. The other adventures over here are for me not that important right now. We are quite happy with what we have uh, at the moment. So what I want to do now today, I want to talk about manuals and the acquisition of knowledge in general, because where do I start? You see, the, here we have the skill bar or the skill tree of Haley and Hua's uh, law. This, these are all the skills you can learn with the Grand Chariot law. But we have also acquired other laws. Here in the sect menu you, you can see what laws you have acquired. So let's take for example the True Sun Refining Law. If we check this out we see this thing has an entirely own skill tree. The cool thing here is every cultivator can learn the skills of all the other laws. So we can 
use all the other skills. While Haley and Hua is a follower of the Grand Chariot Law, she can learn all the skills from all the other laws, nevertheless. There are a couple of things to keep in mind, though. Since the law is a metal law, there are elements which are counteracting against metal. So think of it that every skill on this tree, I mean, you see it here, has a uh, affinity towards a certain element. Some skills are just not fitting for your law and learning them is way more costly. Whereas learning some favorable skill is way, way less costly, so it evens out eventually. But that means you can learn everything, considered you have enough XP, called inspiration here in this game. To achieve that, we must use the manual pavilions. Here at the manual pavilion, you see there's a couple of buttons here. Don't be too confused uh, from that. What we need here is the transcribe manual, uh, this, the transcribe command. We want to transcribe a whole law. So here we go. And now we're going to transcribe the sunflower refining law. Why not? You see the law here will need a capacity of 151 and we have a capacity in our sect of 1800. So everything is good. We choose the law. We need to select who's going to transcribe that and off she goes. The really, really good thing about that is transcribing a law is not only adding the law into the possession of your sect. It's also no, not the whole joints. Ignore that for now. It's also a way of generating a lot of inspiration for your cultivator because when you transcribe a law, when you're done with that, you also gain a big chunk of inspiration from that. So that's really good. And the agency in Mount South is done. So now they need to choose a policy, it says. Ignore that for a moment. When you Click the uh, agency there, wait a sec, um, here, this uh, flag here, when you click it, we get to uh, choose what we can build there. You can also on the screen by just clicking it there. So you see there's these spots. When we click at these spots, there are different um, buildings we can build there. So the most, most important things to build at the agencies are fields because at fields you produce food. Food is so important because the mainly used policy is charity. With charity, you just uh, your sect has an agency in this village and you do good things for these people. In effect of that, there will be more and more people joining your sect there, which leads to you generating these inspiration points. The more followers your location has, the more belief they produce per day. That belief can be acquired by your cultivators and is directly transformed into inspiration. So basically, this agency is producing experience for your sect to learn skills with. And when you use the charity policy, you will gain more and more followers across the passing of the time simplified. That's why fields are the first most important thing, because every field gets uh, yields enough wheat to support one charity policy. The necessary materials to, for the construction must be located at your home sect. It's a little bit weird, but that's just as it is. And they get magically teleported to the, uh, to the agency in question. Don't ask. So we're obviously needing more wood here. And once that is established, it takes some time, we can pay the charity uh, policy with that. I also want to build a second field because this way I can sport yet another agency. Sadly, the, the, the slots for buildings in a area are limited so yeah it's a choice you have to make 
but you will never ever make a bad decision with maximizing food production in the in the agencies because basically you want to have as many agencies as possible producing uh, charity policy because from my experience the more followers you have the better so due to insufficient resources we have cancelled the policy that's a pity but we can't change it So we'll have to wait until that uh, farm has been built. So. I'm gonna fast forward until this thing has been built. Alright. So a couple of things are just happening right now. And the farmlands are almost completed. But I wanted to uh, put a, f a showcase on a couple of things. First off, Helion is almost uh, done with the transcription. And our uh, doggo, no, you don't attack buildings. There was one thing that I wanted to showcase here. Defecate and storehouses. Let the animals do that if they want to do that, because... Well, you know, the feces of a magical beast is actually valuable stuff that you might want to use. So... Now we want to uh, check out what kind of benefit you gain from that. So before the transcription we had 2,700 inspiration and after the transcription we have 40,200. So you see it's a really really beneficial thing considering that we can now do that for every single law in our position. So yes you hone you you're going to hone your intellect. You do you. So now well, my cultivator will be busy quite some days because you're, we're also transcribing eventually the Grand Chariot Law too. But this will provide her the experience points to, to get somewhere. Meanwhile, we have now finished the farmlands in Mount South and we will now put up the charity policy here. From here on, our followers will only grow very, very slowly. On its own you see without any policy the region will lose followers every day that's why it was so important to bring up this policy as quick as possible because we don't want to lose off our followers at any cost beyond that well we have to wait until we have that wood beyond that the agencies serve you like i mentioned mainly as a source for experience that's the primary and most obvious use for them. There's there's more behind that, and we're going to explore that, of course, <laughs> during the series as well. But for now, we are very busy with the transcription of our laws. Another thing has happened. Here you see that message, Beast Calling Feng Sends Chi. So Calling Feng, that's the name of the beast. And if you click that, you see there, I'm getting uh, tossed towards this corner. There, this is a area where you should not go anymore. Basically, you have your own demon beast spawning on your map and it is pretty dangerous for your low tier people. But at the end of the day, it's also very harmless if you just leave it alone. Because my personal approach is I keep this beast there as long as I can, because just like a cultivator, it will develop its skills. And the more cultivated the monster, the better the loot. Since it's a monster which really does not do anything to you as long as you get don't get close to it, towards it, it's a good opportunity to just train a free powerful monster. So whenever your dog wants to eat something and you can't afford it, just let him eat uh, just let him eat that the nutrition of your dog is reflecting his power basically the more the better the stuff he gets to eat the better his uh, his skills develop and now we have our first enemies showing up so the dog wants to attack enemies on his own that's really good so we're just going to set that up like and as you see here, the dog just touches the enemy and he's uh, flopped unconscious here. 
So it's really important that you set your dog on kill and set up the killing blow on these guys. Because as a matter of fact, I've had it several times that enemies that were just downed stood up and just wanted to steal something before they leave the map. So finish off raiders. Shouldn't leave them like that. Okay, so the next uh, things we need to do are transcription work. Transcription work and transcription work. This is a pretty uh, lengthy process, but it is very much worth it. All right. It's also taking quite long. It's one of the longest uh, procedures you can go for. And sometimes your uh, people fail, as you see here. There's the uh, half the cursor on the energy bar. I kind of like missed to uh, to mention that people, once they are inner disciples, they don't eat food and uh, they don't sleep like normal people anymore. They are taking these things only as a kind of a entertainment. So you don't need to worry about food on the inner disciples, but they will be unhappy if they can't eat if they want to eat. For them, it's just entertainment. So we got the message that a auction with common items will start soon. I am not going to go there because I basically don't have the money for that. So occasionally attack clothing, please no. At the beginning, you need to uh, teach your. Uh, you, you need to take care about your dog quite closely. Oh, this is going to be very, very close. So, it seems like 20 energy are exactly what's necessary to transcribe a law. <laughs> yes. So, something learn. Learn something new every day. Now, since she's uh, that low on energy and she's pretty low, high on stability, I'm going to get her into practice mode here again and let her study a little bit there. So you see now the... Remember when this room was not uh, furnished before? The Chi rating is was already at 5 stars in the time between, but the element fit is now 5 stars because of these stone essences around her. But the thing here is 5 stars reflects not really good the true maximum because basically you could have way more than I have here right now and it would be still displayed as five stars so it's a little bit misleading but the more the better in this game if you can acquire better chi gatherers than these you can notice them that by having a higher number uh, in gathered chi because that's basically just depicting how much chi they can acquire just um, place them down so we have another uh, breakthrough, so let's just uh, let's just get that done. There's only a 50% chance of success here, but that's mostly because the yin yang is bad again. Remember, steel type people like the night, so I'm starting the breakthrough when the dusk is falling, and here the yin yang is uh, improving across the ritual. This doesn't really increase the chances, obviously. The thing is, if you can't do a breakthrough and it doesn't cost you anything um, anything horrible, some, some breakthroughs cost you lifetime or valuable resources, if that's not the case, just uh, keep going until you're broken through. You can, of course, optimize that if you are uh, after, a, after a thrill or something like that, but you don't have to. So... I mean, the whole the whole repeating of uh, breakthroughs is part of the uh, philosophy of this uh, law. Some laws have very easy breakthroughs, but a ton of them. Some laws have very few breakthroughs, but very costly ones. It's very different. So you have a different uh, challenge every time. So Zhen Zhen wants to join us. So well. I'm going to help him. He's a, Sometimes you get these passerby is in need of help uh, events. These are not necessarily options to just uh, recruit somebody. We, we just helped him. 
and now his problem is gone. The game never really tells you what the problem of, of these people is. We just have the statement, a confused stranger passed by. Well, you, you get my idea. So now we have the first bigger breakthrough. You see, Haley and Hua now broke through from a Chi Shaper into a new rank called Core Shaper. That's the next big step in your uh, development. And as you see here, with these next big steps, you get these screens from time to time. So she now receives a big portion of more uh, of extra max Chi. Her artifact power grows. This is basically your, your weapon power. Her temperature tolerances got better and a lot of success rates got better. So this is basically, oh, and she even has a uh, experience gain here. This is basically a big level up for her. And as we see here, it's now cleansed again and we ha get to rinse and repeat. So, but the good thing here is we have now unlocked new abilities. So, we're going to talk about these abilities in more in detail on a, another uh, occasion. For now, I'm going to just let Helian do the transcription of the other laws there. There's still three more to go. That's a lot of work to do, but at the end of the day, I always like to give my first big cultivator all these inspiration points from the transcriptions. And we can also consider soon the next breakthrough of somebody because, you know, you see these guys are building up their foundation quite decently and once that's full, we can transform them into inner disciples too. Maybe we'll do that, maybe we won't. I don't know yet. So, that's the end of this episode. We had a good talk about agencies. I think you guys are now better able to understand how these work. And we did our first major breakthrough. And we also checked out the transcription system. I think that's a lot of things uh, in one for one thing for one episode to go. So lastly, I just want to pinpoint here. You see, this is the amount of inspiration we could gather when we when we get there. The number behind the slash is the maximum amount. It's hard to get there but not impossible. Anywho, thanks for watching, dear friends. It was my pleasure to be there. And as usual, drop your comments down below. Ask away with your questions and leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you like that content. I do daily content, so just turn on those notifications and you won't miss any future things I produce. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.